Hey everybody, this is Andrew from Pyramind. I'm a graduate of the ground campus there in San Francisco and working on the technical support team for our online classes, trying to bring you excellent content for all you producers out there. Today I'm gonna to show you a really cool tip that I've been doing with Machine recently. And basically it's a tip that allows you to emulate the new Ableton push controllers uh, in key functionality. So if you've seen the push controller and you've watched any of the videos, you will have probably seen that one of the things you can do is when you load up, here, let me, let me show you, I have a picture of it. You can take one of these rotary knobs and you can select a, a key, for example, E minor uh, or G, you can even do modes, G, Locrian, and it'll take the pads here and you can play the notes in that scale without hitting any wrong notes. This is opposed to the way that most controllers work that allow you to just play the half steps that are on the keyboard. So it's a lot easier if you're just jamming on stage and you don't want to hit any wrong notes, you don't want to worry about which notes to hit. You can literally just mash your hands on there and not hit any wrong notes. Might not sound that great if you do that, but no wrong notes, you can't beat that, right? So let's go back over to machine. So the way we're gonna do this is, I've already got a sound loaded up in group D. It's a reactor pad, I didn't, I didn't program it myself, I just found a preset, and it sounds like this. <laughs> So just as you would expect, it's the chromatic scale, right? And what I'd like to do is play the C major scale. But I'd like to do that on group A, and I'd like to do that the same way that the in-key functionality works on the push. So I'd like to just be able to play all 16 pads and have that be pure, straight C major, no chromatic notes in between. So we're going to sample from group D into group A, and we're just gonna sample the notes we want. So let's do that. If you haven't sampled in machine before, it's fairly straightforward, but it takes a bit of getting, it takes a bit of practice. So I've already got the sampling button pushed. I'm gonna just turn that off so you can see this is your starting point, and you hit edit sampling, and hit the record button on the top left, okay? The first decision that you need to make is your source. Is it internal or external? Well, external is, as you can see, it's actually registering my voice right now because my microphone's coming into my computer. Uh, just like that, it's an external source. A vinyl record would be another example of an external source. Um, I'm gonna set it to internal, so it's gonna sample a sound coming from a machine. Um, the input, you can sample the entire master coming out of machine, or you can target a specific group. In this case, it doesn't matter because the only sound we're, we're doing on the whole machine is the one note at one at a time. But if you were in a performance, if you had drums going on in another group and other sounds going, samples going off in other groups, you could target one, spe one specific group. And so in this case, it doesn't matter. Let's do group D. The threshold will set low. Um, if you're not familiar with that, it's probably better suited for another video. So let's just uh, set it to about negative 50. And then we're going to hit start. Okay, so it says waiting for input. It's waiting for audio to cross that threshold. So I'm gonna record a C note to this pad here from group D. I'm gonna do the C that lives on pad one, but I'm gonna play it for a few seconds just so we can get the entire envelope of the note. Okay, ready? Great. So we're gonna go back over to group A and we've gotta stop the recording. So as you can see, it's still running. It's been going for 27 seconds here. That's a pretty long time. We don't want our sample to be that long, but let's hit stop. And here's the whole thing. There's our, our little bitty sound over there and then lots of excess space. It's not gonna really make a difference if you have that in there, but you might not want a 30 second sample in your in your file if, if it doesn't do anything for you. Uh, but that's what it sounds like. And then lots and lots of silence. So it's really easy to edit that out, uh, the back end there, and just save some room on your hard drive. Uh, I mean, it's not gonna be much for one file, but if you, if you get in the habit of doing this, you'll, you'll shave off a lot of space. So next to the record tab is an edit tab. So I'm gonna hit that, and you can see your start and your end points. Now this is incredibly useful. If, you, if you're familiar with this, then you know, sorry for being redundant, but this is, uh, if you've never seen this before, just move your end point to hit the tail end there and you can see it better on the screen here but on the on the actual computer screen but you don't have to get right up to the exact point of the sound ending but that's close enough and then from here I'm gonna hit the truncate button which just cuts off anything outside of the start and end points there we go okay so that's our first note we have to do that for the rest of the scale now so 
we have to select our second pad and there's nothing on it yet so we need to do the same thing let's hit record and leave everything else the same the same process hit start waiting for input go to group D and now instead of hitting C sharp we're gonna hit D because that's the second note in the C major scale okay ready go back to A hit stop and I'm not gonna worry about the space on the end of this file just because I'd, I'd like to get through this more quickly so let's do this for all of them and I'm going to do this and then I'm just going to sort of fast forward through the video so you can see this in, in quick motion because I don't feel like you need to see all of this uh, in real time. Okay, ready? Okay, so I've just recorded an octave of the C major scale plus one extra note, the D above it, and we ran out of room on our group D. We got to, we got to the 15th pad, and that was the last, the highest pad in our key. But we still have room in group A to keep going. So in order to get group D to go up higher, what you need to do is you need to turn to pad mode, and you see this knob here, it's bass key. And that's telling you this first pad which note that is. So right now it's set to C4, but if we want to go up an octave higher, we need to set this to C5. You can set it to anything, anything higher than C4, and all of these would shift accordingly. But let's just make it easy on ourselves, go an octave higher, and we can re keep, keep recording from there. C5. Okay, so I've already done this particular note, and I've already done the C above it. So our next note's gonna be E. So let's go back to group A and keep recording. Okay, so we've just finished recording up through uh, a D above, well, two octaves above our bass note, and one more note above that, which is D. So we have a two octave span, and more importantly, everything on this, on this machine is now in the key of C major. All right, that brings us to the end of the tip here. And if you have any more questions or if you want to learn more about machine, head over to pyramine.com slash training. Uh, we'll have a class coming up real soon with Bass Clef that teaches you all about the machine workflow and from the ground up. And it's a really great class. I've, I've seen a lot of the videos so far and it's going gonna, it's gonna to get you caught up to speed. So thanks for watching and take care. very much like to thank Pyramide for hosting me here once again. Um, I think this institution is really cool and until I came here for the first time I had never seen anything like it in my whole life. What I think really separates us from other people who teach is that we are outrageously passionate about what we do and especially in electronic music. Since, since coming to Pyramind I, I've discovered electronic music and you know San Francisco being a mecca for underground electronic music opened up so many doors for me and kind of blew my mind. We cover everything from absinthe to contact. When people get to the mind-melting level, uh, we get into modular synthesis. Everything about native instruments, everything about logic synths, down to the, the finest detail, we, we learned it all. The fundamentals of understanding how things work, that's just essential. But then beyond that, there's so much more, and that's where it gets into just a lot of, of the artistic side of like, the creative approach of, of why you do something, not just how. There's a lot of schools that just, you know, they focus on the technicality of, of recording music, um, but I wanted something that would foster creativity and, and really help me develop as an artist as well. Each of our genre-specific programs comes in four levels. There's a basic, an advanced, a professional, 
and then a master's level. And the master's level is, of course, everything we do. It's the largest and most powerful programs that we can create for you.